All right, good evening. Welcome everyone to the yep. Thursday, August 18th, 2022 yes. planning board meeting. I'd like everyone to rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Introduction to board members. To the far left, we have Jerry Graybill. Then we have Dave Andreessen. We have myself, Michael LaRue. To my right, we have Phil Roy and Matt Henry. We also have Jen McCabe, the code enforcement officer, Tammy Bellman, the town planner, and Shannon Rogers, the admin assistant to planning and code. All right. We're going to open up the first public comment. Okay, we're going to close the first public comment. There's no public hearings. The next is approval of minutes for August 4th, 2022. Take a motion that we approve the August 4th, 2022 meeting minutes. I'll second. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next, old business, site plan expansion, Harvey Paul, easygoing recreational sales, 569 Portland Street, map R72, lot 9-1. Hello, I'm Harvey Paul. When Mr. Paul was here before the board last time, he had some parking questions from both myself and Mike. We went down to visit his site. Very productive meeting. Very productive. He walked us around. He answered questions. And come to find out, many of the conditional uses that are still sitting in the file are no longer in use. Hence, it frees up quite a few of the parking spaces we were trying to figure out how are we going to get them all in there? So consequently, you are able to approve his site plan expansion tonight because it was deemed complete last week. You did not request a site, uh, site walk nor a public hearing on it. So if you so desire, you can deem it complete. There are recommendations in the course of the, the site visit that we did that Michael has and knows about. Mm -hmm. So it will be up to the board. If you have any further questions for Mr. Paul, he would be more than happy to answer them. But it was, I got to tell you, it was a very productive meeting. Very, very informative. Yeah. I um, think that was the only condition that we had with, from the last meeting, correct? Correct. Okay. Yeah. I'd like to make a motion to find the applicant complete. <coughs> a second that. Okay. Further discussion. Um, this is where... Um, one of the recommendations we had was an as built within 12 months or prior to any additional expansion outside. No, outside, additional expansion is yep. the next one. Okay. So basically, that's just saying it's all there. This is what you're doing. It, we've discussed this, and I'm, now I'm it's okay just, with that. Yeah. And he's and Harvey's okay with that. So um, we'll have a discussion on that real quick. Um, you guys want to add that to the conditions as well? Well, I'm not clear on the condition. What was it again? So it's a as built. Um, so basically, they do the survey and they say this room is this, this area is designated for this, and it has to be at exactly that. Okay. So what we're going to be doing with that is getting rid of a lot of the old conditional uh, uses that are no longer needed there. So that's going to free up a lot of the spaces with parking. Um, another because there's a lot of expansion potential for his property yeah and for what he's doing for businesses over there yeah so I just want to have the I just changing a blueprint <coughs> is that no an as built survey okay a lot of towns require them after any type of construction is done including with subdivisions an as built survey literally it's like a drone going overhead and taking a picture, only you have all the dimensions and everything on the survey of where this building is and where this building is and how they, far they are from the lot lines. His rain garden will be on there. Um, any additional parking area, anything that is over there. 
it will be listed on that as built survey so that should he decide he wants to come back and expand his business whichever one is over there he already has the survey saves him a whole lot of time and energy going forward to come back to the board for the expansion and I just I just want the time though I don't mm -hmm. I don't want it to be as part of the right it would be 12 months yeah that's yeah. right yeah. yeah okay um, another thing was the outside lighting in compliance with CEO letter and that's Jen um, you've had an issue with the lights there or? I, I I've gotten the calls on the okay. lighting Tammy has. okay yeah um, and then the parking which the parking we just discussed and you were talking about putting the curves in. I, I, I have no problem with that. Okay. Well played. Okay. Yeah. I, I know. All right. So we have a motion and a second. The, any further discussion? With the 12-month condition. With the 12-month condition. Okay. So we need a new motion for yes. that. Yeah. You Correct. Withdraw. Because yeah. you just you would found withdraw it. Withdraw and you make a new motion. Okay. I will withdraw my motion and make a new motion to approve with the caveat for the 12-month if that's not that's arduous for the no, that's what you yeah. okay. I'll second that motion. Okay. 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 Further discussion. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Great. Mr. Paul, your findings of facts will be ready at the next meeting. You don't have to attend unless you want to, because they'll approve the findings of facts, <coughs> and then Michael sign them, and I'll mail them out to you. There's you nothing better than coming, coming on a Thursday night. Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving right along in whole business is LID performance standards model ordinance, which is the low impact development. Yeah. Okay, good. <coughs> Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Not COVID. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Board Thank Thank you. Board. <laughs> All that needs to take place this evening, because you've had a chance to hear from Christy at the last meeting regarding the model ordinance for the low impact development ordinance that needs to be incorporated into the Town of Berwick's ordinance. All that you are going to be doing tonight is making a motion to send this document to Maine DEP so they can hold their public hearings on it. Every town has to do it. She's trying to get everybody to send them all up at once so they're all on the same schedule for the public hearings. What will then take place is barring anybody come in and saying, oh, no, I want this and I want this and you've got to do this. They'll come back to the town and say, okay, we, you've got to add this into your ordinance. I don't believe they've done that before. I'm talking worst case scenario. So once it comes back from Maine DEP, with or without comments from them, some of this information is already in the town of Berwick's land use ordinance and subdivision regulations. This is not set in stone. You can change it once it comes back. So if you opt that you want something that's optional to be a requirement, you can do that. If you have something that's a requirement and you want it tweaked so it's not quite so restrictive, you can do that. You're also able to select rural, urban, or suburban for the zones that will need to have this low impact design development ordinance. So that's that part's not going up to the state. You don't have to determine that until you've had a better chance to look at land use, subdivision regs, and this suggested model ordinance. Any questions? Tammy, yeah, quick question. Like so this is moving forward, correct? Correct. Okay. Just make just yeah. All right. Yeah. Tammy, the only concern I had, and I, I know I brought it up in the previous meetings, I just want it to be on the record. Um, and I don't know if it goes in the waiver section or if it's a policy piece, but uh, we had talked about the hybrid requirement uh, for uh, commercial versus residential or urban versus suburban um, and placement on, say, feeders to the waterway. And, and the only reason for that is I just don't, I don't want it to be overly restrictive for new applicants coming in if they're, you know, if they're trying to build a home, if Correct. they're trying to expand their business. Um, are we going to have an opportunity to have a voice on that so we're not yep. making it overly restrictive for new applicants? Yep. Yeah, this okay. is, this is just what the town is considering. Mm -hmm. Okay. So once 
we determine so how you want to tie our hands or anyone else's? Nope, it is not going to. Okay. Um, when I was in South Berwick last night, three people asked the same question to make sure Christy would answer it the same way. And yes, it came back the same way. This is not etched in stone. Would we have input on that verbiage and is there any sample verbiage from anybody that's... You'd have to go out. Uh, right now, Southern Maine is being hit with this. I don't know if the northern districts have done it yet. I, okay. I can't tell you that, but I figure they're on the same schedule we are. Okay. So I don't have the verbiage yet because it's a brand new ordinance going in. And depending on how restrictive your zoning and your subdivision regs are, will determine how much you need to put in or you can just scratch and say, nope, it's already in the in. The one piece that I want you to pay attention to is there. there is a fee in lieu. If a developer comes in and it appears it's going to be very restrictive for them, we've got to figure out how that fee is going to be determined. Does it go strictly to the Board of Selectmen? The only problem with going strictly to the Board of Selectmen, and yes, they do approve the fees, so we would want to suggest that prior to anybody coming in so we already have it on the books. That would be my only suggestion. Maybe you, we try and do a, uh, a joint session and discuss yep. that between the selectmen and the planning. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that would be a good, a good way for the next joint meeting that we have. Mm -hmm. Yep. Shannon, can we make sure we reach out, please? <laughs> she has my pen. Any other questions? No. Okay. So we're looking for a motion to uh, move this it. forward and send it to the state. Yep. Correct. Through Christy Rabaska is going to send it forward for us. Okay. So I would like a motion to with the understanding. Motion to approve with the understanding, and we we get to fine tune it for the unique needs of our town. Yep. I'll second that. Okay. Further discussion. <laughs> All in favor. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right, next, new business, Steve Clement, map 43, lot 3-17, resign subdivision go, go. amendment. So Steve's not here, but Tammy has a letter from Steve saying he gives you authority to Act on his behalf, act, yeah, correct. Act on his behalf. So Steve came to me very distraught. I folded my plans. You can't fold subdivision plans and then get them recorded. It's just that simple. He didn't realize it until it was outside of the 90 days in which he has to get them recorded and bring us a signed copy. So he went and obtained the same exact survey and provided me with an original signed by the board. He also provided me with the findings of facts to go with it, which is what I had requested. I could not locate one of these in the parcel file, so I'm glad he had the original. Some of you signed in blue ink, some of you signed in black ink on May 20th, 2021. So with a motion by the board, you could re-sign it so I could get it to Steve so that his plans will be accurate and current. Do we have to have a motion? Can't we just sign them? Just, I would, because it's outside of the 90 day restricted time frame, technically he should have gone back to subdivision because of the ordinance. He came in the first month that COVID hit and everything shut down. Yeah, right. So that's why I'm not, I'm, I really don't, during this COVID piece, I don't want to hold people to that time frame because when the town hall shuts down, you're shut down. There's, there's, even though you were doing Zoom, you still can't like it is when someone's here. No, nothing's changed with the plan. It's just a formality. Nope. I, I held it up. Right. Yep. He provided the same one. The same engineer signed off on yeah. them. Yeah. So yeah. I'll make a motion that we resign uh, the plans for will, Mr. Clement. I will second. Okay. Uh, further discussion? All in favor? All right. You guys are making the minutes very easy by you two motioning and seconding. It's going great. High five. And says the one not writing. Okay. 
even though uh, even though uh, yeah. Sammy, sure don't fold even though I wasn't yeah, no worries. on um oh. you're, you're signing the revision. Okay. Because I wasn't. Yep. Oh, wait, okay, you're not yeah, yeah, I'm just making sure. Yep. I did check. <coughs> okay. Yep. So moving right along, we have CAF Realty, Maine, LLC, 11 Pond Road, Site Plan Amendment, Map R70, Lot 16. Good evening, I'm David Ayer, owner of CAF Realty, Maine. So I was notified today about the meeting. Three o'clock when I was on my way to Cape Cod. Oh, so nice. I don't know I'm if I'm sorry. supposed to have a. Uh, I oh. provided all kinds of uh, plot plans and stuff for the board. Hope yep. you guys and have they them. Do, they do have them, David. Okay. Yeah. Uh, am I going to explain how the this occurred? Or how does this? Are you guys going to ask me questions? They want to know a quick rundown of what you got going and why you're here. Okay. The reason why I'm here is because uh, I relocated the fence uh, per the original plan. And that's because my abutter asked me if I wouldn't put fence around her property because of uh, the extensive landscape and I put along her uh, property. Uh, she has submitted a uh, signed letter to the board addressing why she asked me to do that and that she did do that. And so I kept the same footage and I just... Uh, Moved my the fence line along the property line. It looks it's more of a decorative type thing. So uh, that's the only change. Yes. And in your packets, he also provided the water information for the last testing results done on it, and a copy of the findings of facts from the original approval. Mike, if you need more information, if people weren't on the board for this application when it came through and why the letter is important to this, let me know and I can help with that. Well, that would be. That would be I think I'm the only one that in, kind of in the dark with this one. Do you care? You want to know the story? I mean, it's, you want, no, it's, it's, if you want a quick one down, that's fine. If you want, I, I would like a, to be sure. Up. It's, been, it's right, been a hot we're minute. We're blaming it on it's been, it's been a I'll hot I'll tell minute. you the story. All right, Thank let's you. Hear it, let's hear it. <laughs> Sounds kind of fun. Oh, absolutely. Can we share the podium? Absolutely. I'll step aside. Thanks. So Mr. Ayers came in front of the board, um, and we actually had a lot of abutters that showed up to the meetings. Um, there was one in particular that sits right in front of the barn, I'm going to call it, um, on site. If you see it on here, it's the existing house out front on the plan off Pond Road, Marlene. So there were a lot of there was a lot of concern. There was a lot of question about the building going there, the building pe being put up, the water, where the water was going to run to. Um, there were some hard feelings involved. Just giving you a heads up. Sure. Um, but once the building was there, um, we I actually went up to the site, and Mr. <coughs> Ayers and I had a conversation about it. He started kind of saying, "Yeah, uh, you know, we talked about the fence." And at the time, and I was like, you know, your fence doesn't match your plan. What's going on? And he stated that the abutter had approached him and asked him not to put the fence um, along, like, the part where it was going to go because of her gardens and the bushes and how, you know, she didn't mind the look of the building. It actually looked better than she thought it was going to be. Um, she wanted to keep the, you know, native plants that she had there sure, yeah. intact. And 
That's kind of what she had told Mr. Ayers. So we asked, the town asked, because it was such a, it was a hard application. Sounds like it, yeah. It was difficult. So um, we asked for that letter um, to be written from Marlene. And once we got that letter and we kind of got to have a conversation, I had a phone conversation with Marlene, um, and she kind of went over the whole process and why she felt the way she did. Um, we decided that as a town we were okay with it and we were hoping that today that you would be okay with it too. So basically that's the story. Is that okay? Yeah, Is that okay story? Absolutely. What, was the fence a, a requirement that, that we imposed? Mm -hmm. yes, There's all security fencing that goes around the property. Okay. For every, yeah. And, and you're, you sir are willing to assume that risk, whatever risk is imposed by not having a fence? Yeah, uh, you know, at the time I didn't know much about what was what the process was and there's really no value there until the product is actually dried so I mean anyone here could grow the same product at their house there's really no risk and then uh, then after realizing there's a four-foot drainage ditch all around the property so you can't drive through it uh, with a vehicle and uh, along the road I, I put a fence there to, for decorative purposes well thanks for being neighborly and yeah. uh, agreeable it makes everyone's life easy I'd very like cordial to make a motion to uh we're looking for a motion on this yes yes mm -hmm. make a motion to uh, <clears throat> accept the revision i'll second the motion okay, for the good. site plan amendment yep uh, further discussion <clears throat> okay yep. i'd like to just ask dave i'm fine with the fence dave. <clears throat> wait you have to exclude yourself no i don't are you sure about that yep. so all right so you bring this up okay so how this works is if you request that he recuse himself, we I as did a, earlier. Uh, well, you have to do it here. Okay. So we as a board discuss it and make a vote for that. Okay, why do you why does why do you need to be recused? Well, I don't think I have to, if you just listen to what I'm asking. I'm fine with defense and what you did. I just have one other question on the building and per your plans. You don't have down lights installed per drawing C two. Which is required. That's it. That's okay. all. That's all I'm saying. As long as you conform to what you have on your plan, right. I'm fine. I'll, I'll I'll take care of that. Okay. That that's it. So should we rescind so, the previous and make that a condition? I'm just asking. I'm, well, it I has just, it has to have the the right lighting anyways for right. the right. town it, ordinance. Okay. For the town so, ordinance, but so it doesn't change anything. Also show that on okay. C C two. Yeah. Okay. That, that's all I'm saying. Okay. So do you still feel that he's a conflict of interest and we have to w make a vote on this or? You could not make a vote. You could just. It's a discussion that we just have. I mean, right. as long right. as Jerry could, as long as you can make a neutral position and right. go by what the land, the land use ordinance is. Yep. I'm, I'm fine with the fence as long as it's not needed for a security purpose going all the way around. I like the way it looks. I just said that. I'm not, mm -hmm. I don't have a problem. I'm just. I didn't know if it was a requirement with the gate like we all talked about two plus years ago. That's what I'm asking. That, that's where I'm coming from. Okay. I, I don't perceive it as a conflict of interest. I think you're doing your due diligence as a board member. If anyone else sees it differently. It's okay. Yeah, I think you're okay. 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 Dave, what do you say? Are you all right with it? Okay. All right. <clears throat> so we have a motion and a second. So uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So, David, one thing I just noticed, I'll get a hold of your engineer to change the signature block so the board can sign it on at the next meeting. In the upper left hand, upper right hand corner, there's only one line for the chair. I got to have everybody sign on it. So, I'll get a hold of your engineer so he can get me the right block in there. Got it. All righty. And then I'll get you a copy. That's for your wonderful. records. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Moving right along in new business, site plan expansion, amendment, and conditional use, map 71, lot 10, 420 Portland Street, LLC. Wait, where's that letter? Oh, right here. Okay. Yeah. And so that you all know, I have the original letter mm -hmm. in the you file. That. Okay. I forgot Number to tell one. you. I'm sorry. You're on, Jody. Hi, I'm Jody Rogers. Um, I'm one of the partners at 420 Portland Street. 
My partner, Jesse Cole, is here, and my engineer, John Shagden, from Ambit Engineering, is here as well. I think most of you know me. I've been around for a long time. <coughs> but we were, we might have even been the first cannabis operation in town. We were here before there was even an ordinance for cannabis. You and, were. Mm -hmm. and we worked very closely with James as you guys put together the ordinance and verbiage and tried to everybody work together for what you guys are seeking and what we're, we're all as good citizens wanting to do. So um, we had submitted way back when you guys decided how many um, facilities of each type of operation you were going to allow. We had actually, uh, there was like a drop dead date. We had gotten our application in uh, to be considered one of those. And then uh, as James looked at our plan, he noticed that we were in a shore land protection, which we didn't know, he didn't know until he looked at the maps. And it was like, oh my gosh. So that, we kind of hit pause on that. We were still considered pending, but it was paused. And then we had a lot of work to do that with the state and and then COVID and everything else. So we are, finally have um, our package totally together. And basically what we're asking, right now we are just a medical cannabis grow. And so we are looking for conditional use expansion. It's allowed in the zone um, and even our shoreland. Every, everything ordinance wise is in order. So we are just asking that we can expand to incorporate other uses within cannabis. So we would like to be able to do adult use. Um, we already have a retail front. You probably have driven by it and like hated the fact that we've got blue wrap on it for <laughs> years, waiting to see for sure if we could do our project. So the building uh, as it exists, um, just some history, it was an airline hangar that was at Pease and it got moved up here. So we are now coming to you, our operating name is going to be the 420 hangar. And um, the 100 by 100 building is where our cultivation takes place. And then there's a 40 by 44 or something building in the front where we expect to do our dispensary and retail. So that all exists. Um, what we're bringing is an expansion that would allow us towards the rear of the building to do um, some processing and there is, uh, we thought we'd do it all at once. There's another uh, cultivation building back there. Uh, we're not 100% sure that's ever gonna be built. As you guys probably know, the cannabis industry has really gotten hammered lately. So, you know, if there's no need for it, it, it that expansion would not happen. But we wanted to be all inclusive. Um, I would like to say that we are, what we are proposing is an improvement to um, what, what was there back when the shoreland protection went into effect. So we've actually revegetated some areas and so forth, but we are grandfathered by non-vegetated space as it existed when the shoreland protection went into effect on that property. So I'll give you over to John because he's the expert on all the details of the plan. Uh, good evening. <coughs> John Chagan from Human Engineering. I don't know if you want me to put up boards or what the procedure is if you want to go through. The project, uh, it's a sketch plan review, so um, we uh, believe that we've submitted a complete package with all the information that you need to move forward to a uh, preliminary um, to schedule a, a site walk and uh, so on and so forth. But I'd be glad to do whatever you would like as far as walking you through either the application yeah, I, I material. So. You could see the fold outs, yeah. Sure, okay. Yeah, his pictures are probably better than the little ones you've got. Judgment call. So, yeah, so the, the site plan set has a cover sheet um, that uh, shows you the location, um, our information about our company, and um, the only other member of the uh, consultant team is the septic uh, designer from Albert Frick Associates. There is a new septic design in the package. There's an existing conditions plan. The property is located, as you know, on uh, Route 4, but uh, sort of hard to see from the highway is uh, Lover's Brook, which runs uh, along the uh, northeast side of the lot. The next plan is this the vegetated area worksheet plan, and as Jordan mentioned, the site as it existed uh, in um, 2007 is shown on the left. The 
has calculations about what was vegetated at that time. This is what it is now, and uh, we're complying with no further devegetation um, on the property um, so that we meet it's, that. It's kind of revegetated plant. itself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The next sheet is the site plan, as mentioned, as existing buildings. Um, on the site, the building is here with the bump out front. Is that C1? I'm sorry. That's is that what C3? you're looking at? C3. C3. Thank you. So the plan is to uh, the town driveway is to be maintained, but the, the plan is to introduce a paved parking area as you come off the highway. Uh, <coughs> that will have 18 parking spaces, including a handicapped space. That handicap space accesses the building through a map system. There's also a stairway for the uh, public to access the uh, retail store and dispensary on the first floor. They'll have offices above, and you have this uh, cultivation building that exists. They would like to first propose uh, constructing this uh, two story manufacturing facility that is attached, that would be attached to the uh, um, 100 by 100 plus or minus uh, cultivation building. This area would be paved in here, and then there's a future uh, cultivation and cultivation warehouse that's shown on the plan sort of as the <coughs> max build out if uh, business goes quite well and sales continue to be brisk. Um, then there's an employee parking area shown here. So that is separated from the public. Uh, and there's an area here in the back that allows for... Uh, You're going to have to speak into the mic. They can't hear you on the TV. Sorry. Okay. Sorry to those at home. Um, <laughs> I don't know how far back I should go, but basically we're, we're talking about the additions of the building. And then uh, I was just getting to the area that is uh, to the southeast of this parking area for the employees. And that's going to be dedicated to uh, a truck turning area. There's a sheet in the plan that shows that <clears throat> for uh, significant truck deliveries, the truck would enter the site, come down to the end, pull in back out and then uh, turn towards the highway and then they could back into the loading dock in the middle here. So there's uh, care has been taken to allow for uh, deliveries and uh, shipping. There's a devegetated area chart in the lower left hand corner that shows that we're reducing. There's a parking requirements chart on the um, here uh, we've added up all the different uh, parking uses and the plan supports those uses with uh, conforming parking there's a phasing plan or uh, phasing notes that speak to the applicants desire to uh, construct in an orderly fashion but not all at once or be obliged to construct all at once the next sheet in the set is the utility plan. The site is served by uh, electrical service and an underground um, run from a pole to a transformer. <clears throat> Everything uh, beyond that electrically is going to be connected interior to the building. The, three, the two additions will be connected to the original building, so uh, the extensions of electric service will occur inside. <coughs> the well is located uh, to the uh, northwest of the um, hangar building. That's going to also uh, service the entire facility, so internal water uh, connections would just be expanded. This plan shows the uh, site location of the proposed <coughs> Uh, new septic system. The septic system is a design in the package that has been <coughs> expanded to allow uh, all of the uses here to um, uh, to have proper disposal. Uh, it's pretty much uh, it's pretty close to the location of the septic that exists now, but it's expanded. 
<coughs> uh, in its uh, size. Uh, currently, there's a pump station out here in the front that uh, pumps out. That pump station will remain. And then connections from the buildings in the back will go by gravity to the proposed field. Uh, it shows a bank of um, uh, a concrete pad with some cooling equipment on the uh, <coughs> northeast side of the existing uh, hangar facility. And um, that pretty much handles the utilities. Uh, the next one, C5, is a grading plan. So <coughs> as with anything uh, where you're expanding the footprint of the buildings, you want to pay attention to stormwater runoff. So we will be directing runoff uh, from the parking area and the driveway to an existing swale that runs down the west side of the lot and um, at a point uh, towards the back of the lot there'll be a catch basin installed in that swale that will direct the runoff over to a treatment swale. The runoff from the paved area that is going to be between the structures the loading and unloading area and the roof drainage is going to be captured and directed to an underground uh, detention system. The system is a series of <coughs> excuse me, plastic tanks uh, called our tank. It's a fairly recent innovation in drainage prod products. It, uh, you can drive over it, uh, but it has a 95% void area so that uh, it allows you to collect rainwater and then release it slowly, which is the uh, method that we're using to control peak runoff. That our tank system here below grade then bleeds into the swale. And um, there's uh, a, um, in your package is the drainage analysis that shows that we're not going to be increasing any stormwater runoff uh, off the site. And then the last plan in the set is the aforementioned truck turning plan. So um, that's the plan set. You have a package here of additional information which I could go through or just answer your questions if you have them. Jen? Would you like to start? Yeah, you can, can start. start. You can start. I have a couple questions. So I've been in on a lot of meetings with um, for this project and I just have a few questions if that's okay so if you look on any of the drawings there is a concrete block material storage and forgive me if I'm wrong but that was leased out to somebody correct will they continue to lease that or is that going to go away they, they are you have to come up and speak <coughs> on that mic so that's um, Bill Reno, who I think you guys probably know. He's got site construction all over the place. Um, that's one of four sites where he will store equipment, and he doesn't currently utilize those areas. Uh, it's not to say he wouldn't in the future, but... Okay, so it's going to stay. Yeah, and he's not. he doesn't have any structures. It's pretty much just um, his equipment. So if you look on T1 plan, mm -hmm. and you look at that concrete block storage, it looks yep. like your truck turnaround literally hits it how wide is it right there do you have the actual measurement for that so the, <clears throat> the truck actually goes beside it okay but there's it's enough pretty room close, but it, the how, truck will fit beside it how wide is that <clears throat> how wide know? is the uh, containment area or the truck the truck turnaround how wide is the truck turnaround yeah back yeah. when it uh, backs up right there do you see what I see? Yeah, between the parking lot yep. and, <clears throat> and that uh, container is about 50 feet. Okay, because it looks like it's running, and forgive me if I'm wrong on this, it looks like it's running right over that swale there. Like it looks like, can I just show you what I see? Maybe it'll make more sense. Yeah, it fits right in there, in that little slot. Yeah. I mean, it looks like it's like that step, but it just looks like it's 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 like it
from this over to here. Sure. We've talked with Bill you know, as well. Those are not permanent blocks, it's those okay. are just stationary. I'm just I mean, going to see that's fine. Yeah. I just, it's just a question. Yeah. And I'm asking it for a reason. Mm -hmm. I'm doing it. <laughs> so I believe that's about 15 feet. It's 15? Okay. So my other question is, snow removal on site, mm -hmm. um, could be my eyes. There's only one spot on site for that snow removal, that snow pile, and that's where the loading dock is <clears throat> in the middle. Is <clears throat> that correct? So I... We, we, didn't, we delineated that on the plan, correct? It's so, yeah, it's snow <coughs> storage. It's right here. Mm -hmm. You see this? It's also at the back, John. Yeah, yeah. you. That's not my question. Oh, okay. <laughs> see right here? This is yeah, snow storage, right? Yeah, okay. That's what it says on our van. Yes. Yeah. No. Yep. Can, so a truck comes down in here, mm -hmm. right, and they back up to the loading dock? Yes. Okay. Yeah, they back. So they come down, they turn around, and then they back. In this I don't way. care about that one. Yep. So thanks, Mike. Here, here's, my, here's my question. All right. I have a question, and it has to do with um, cultivation runoff. Um, we have, what, three different facilities yes. that we have mm -hmm. storage tanks that hold their water and they get mm -hmm. tested um, at, before they allow to get dumped into the, the water treatment. I would like about the septic or wastewater? No, waste water. runoff water for Yeah, that would go into the septic. Well, is that where you plan on putting it? Jody can speak. So um, there's many different ways to grow. Our yeah. method is in soil, yeah. and we grow on rolling tables, and there's essentially no runoff. So that it's spoken to in one of the wastewater notes in the packet, but the majority of water creation is washing the tables down, like which happens once every once the room is harvested, and um, washing pots. And then in processing, um, the processing itself is kind of a closed loop system and doesn't create waste really. It's just the equipment that you would use that you would wash. So the, the main driver for the septic, and we intend to put any runoff in the septic as well, is, um, is primarily wash down and, um, and toilets for employees. So okay. there just so isn't a lot of So you're saying your cultivation has zero runoff on it? You said 100 gallons a day. Yes. Low. You guys come up and. But that's primarily so for processing. So the cultivation, you water. Can you, uh, can you, you state your name for the record, too? Yeah. Yeah. Jesse Cole. Uh, I'm a partner at 420. So we water uh, with no runoff. That's our intent. Um, the least amount of water that we can use through that process. Um, most people use different media types. We use a media that retains water, so we try not to run off through that process. Okay. Jen, you had a question? So for other projects, we've conditioned them in the, in the past to do a holding tank and yep. give us a list of um, scheduled pump, uh, pumpings. I almost said pumpkin. It's like it's on my brain. <laughs> Too um, soon. Yeah. No, it's not. So anyway, um, a schedule list, you know, how many times a year it got pumped. I, I would like to consider that. And I would also like to consider the leach fill only be used for bathroom use and other things because there is a wetland right there. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm nervous about. Yeah. Thank you. And that's, that's our reasoning for that is if anything does leach out, it's going to go wherever the water goes. So. Okay. So our... If I just understand correctly, it's just from the um, runoff from the pots themselves, the cultivation, or mm -hmm. are you talking us washing like washing nope. dishes and things nope. as well? It's no, just washing. the cultivation yep. stuff. Okay. I mean, we're so happy we to put that a tank in. That's used for other similar businesses in the past. Yeah, so. I, we're happy to put a tank in. It's okay. probably be, and if be it dry, doesn't have to yes. get used, yep. it, you yep. you just keep a log. No and Can you stay up there? Because I want to ask a few questions too when he's ready. Is, I mean, there are. Tight 
areas for us to put a, a tank, a holding tank. So that would be the only consideration where we'll actually be able to put a tank for that. Let your engineer speak to that because they actually don't take up a lot of room. It yeah. seems like they would, but they don't. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then would you have a uh, disposal plan for that water? Because that was also a condition we've put on similar businesses is where are you disposing of that material and are you using a contractor for that? So can I, just from a cultivation standpoint, are you setting requirements around uh, the water runoff if they are using nutrients or if it is a no-till water only cultivation facility? Wastewater is wastewater at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, the th I guess it's hard to say it, but I guess um, we don't really care how you grow. We just want to make sure that if you do have runoff, that it's not going to poison everyone around you. And that's the reason why we want the tanks. Right. Um, other than that, I mean, that's, it's and, to and protect I, everyone else around you. The, the abundance of caution comes from, if, if you look at what's going on in the northern part of the state right now with the PDF stuff, it all started off innocently. Like, okay, we're going to grow and we're going to use this fertilizer and everybody thought it was great and now They've got forever chemicals in the soil up there, and it's messing up agriculture. It's messing up, you know, hunting for people. It, it the ripple effect on that is huge, and that and that's our concern. It's not, you know, the the unknowns. We we just want to make sure they're addressed at this point, so we're not dealing with them down the road when yeah. when it's too late. And if you change styles of growing at any point, and you do have excessive runoff, then you still have that tank instead of having to. You know, if we don't, we won't know. So, and all of a sudden, you start contaminating your septic system, and you don't know, and then it goes down into the yeah, stream. Totally get it. Totally okay. get it. I mean, floor blooms are no fun, and yeah, right. <laughs> screw everything exactly. up. So, yeah. we can certainly do that. I think we just need to look at where we might, like, what the optimum size of that tank is. And Jen, you may even be able to say this is standard. Do you know what you're asking people to put in, or? I can, I would be happy to help you that with that. Yep. Yeah, and we can talk about it. I just don't know options. It's definitely not yeah. as, as much as you're thinking right now. It's it, not It's not. They're much pretty small. Yeah. 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 And, it and I'm sure we can find somebody to take the water. Oh, yeah. It's something we Someone. couldn't actually recycle. I can, I can look on your plan to. right now and see 10 spots where you can put it. I was going to say. Like, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's that. Yeah. I'll help you with it. Like, that's okay. fine. Someone that's fine. We're happy to do that. Can I ask you a few questions just while they're up here? Or are you? Are you sure? I'm done. So I have a concern. My concern is if you go to C3 or any of the drawings here and you see it in front of you, the way the snow pile is piling up there, if we have a large amount of snow, that concerns me a little bit, but I don't think it's too much. What I'm concerned about is if you guys take a look at C3 and you look where it has the office in the front and it has the big two-story um, metal adult use cultivation, you see that building, then you see like the kind of, I don't want to call it like, it's a connecting building. It looks like a corridor building. Do you see that? So, Mike, can I show you what I need? Yeah, yeah, can please. I write on your plan? Yeah, yep. So my concern, and I think we should think about this and condition this, this is a, see this right here? Catch basin. Mm -hmm. Okay? This is also the loading dock mm -hmm. for the truck mm -hmm. to back into. Mm -hmm. Any oils or anything that come off that truck, mm -hmm. some of them don't. Yeah. Some of them do. Yeah. It's going right into that catch basin. Okay. So I think I don't know. I, I think it might be an issue. Okay. So that's a legitimate question. Anytime you have a parking lot, <clears throat> whether it's a delivery truck or a standard any parking vehicle, lot where yeah. vehicles right. are going to sit, um, you have the uh, possibility of that contamination. That is why that catch basin is connected before the R tank system to a filter unit. Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And that's in here? Yes. Sorry that package. I didn't look. Yep. That uh, unit is um, right here, right before the R tank system. And that's the purpose of that is to, is to you know, take care of the treatment. Mm -hmm. And then the R tank system just takes care of the reduction in peak flow. I just didn't see it on the plan. Is it on there? 
Am I looking at the wrong number, mm -hmm. maybe? Mm -hmm. sure, right. Proposed <coughs> treatment catch basin. C5. One of the grading plans. Wrong page. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah I see it. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. And then one more thing. Okay. Uh, nope, that's it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Jerry? Yeah, I'm going to follow up to Jen about the snow. Yeah. If they pile it up, I don't know what your plans are. Are you going to use salt or sand? You get a big pile and it goes out into the low brook mm. and melts and goes. What? So, you know, again, about the, that. the catch basins have deep sumps for, for catch the sand, and obviously they got to be cleaned periodically. Um, uh, you know, I, I'm not sure about um, whether it's a gravel drive, uh, the preponderance or need for salting. I'm just asking because so, I see the pals there. Open this book and go to... Conversation over here. Should we just continue? Or? Yep. <laughs> we can continue. Yeah, that's my concern. I don't, I don't care about the questions. Go ahead. Okay. Fire off. That, right. that's wrong. No, I, I might be speaking to my own ignorance here, but I just want to make sure you guys aren't aren't getting set up. But I was looking at the quick claim deed. Um, that's part of your package, and I noticed that it was notarized by a, a New Hampshire notary on an issue for the state of Maine. It, is that? It's gonna do anything that's good. It You're is good. Set. Okay. Yeah. Just wanted to make sure because I don't want to see you guys get. Set up, and the only other issue um, I see the letter from Chief Town, um, and, and I share similar concerns as the police chief, just with regards to your security. And the only reason for that is we want our businesses to succeed, but we also don't want our businesses to be a, a, a target. And we've had a similar business as yours that that was targeted. It caused significant damage to their storefront, significant loss to that business but it also led in a multi-state multi-county high-speed police chase endangering public safety so my my concern and i think the concern of, of the townspeople would be what it, what additional security measures are you guys putting in place to m ensure that your business isn't a soft target um, example the other business that was targeted was targeted from people out of state that came here to our small town a town of finite resources, limited law enforcement, they can't be everywhere. I just don't want to see your, your business be a target. Are you guys taking additional measures to um, nullify that risk? <clears throat> I, I do have a section I address that um, in regards to the police report, uh, chief of police rather. Uh, a little bit of background about me, uh, I'm an IT security guy, so uh, that's my primary background. We go through, everything is door access, key fobs. We also have additional cameras in place uh, that track uh, face recognition, license plates. We get notification as vehicles come and go from the property. Uh, we get notification on and off hours. If someone moves throughout the building that shouldn't be in a uh, section of the facility. So we look at everything in regards to that. We'll also increase that as we implement the store and the other facilities in the building, in the site. Okay. And it's a lot to digest on our end, so forgive me for not doing my homework. <laughs> Another question, Jerry? I just got one more question. Just so I'm clear and whoever's listening, they've been in before mm -hmm. and couldn't do something. What's different with this one from what they were putting in before? Tammy, can you answer that? Yeah, I can address that. Okay. The main thing that they did is they moved away from the water. 
they took the parking for their clients moved it to the other side of the parking area okay. so the parking area instead of being this wide got shortened next to the water they came away from the setback so they are now entirely out of the high water setback for the brook okay that was the first thing i looked at <laughs> I just okay. wanted to be clear on my part yep. so that I understood. Yep. I thought it was the same and thing they had put in before, but didn't know. Yeah, just yeah. to follow up with that, Jerry. So we actually sat down with them and went through the plan, and we're the ones who moved the part. We had we didn't move it, but the, we had them move it. We had them um, update a few other things on the plan. So the plan looks good from this standpoint. My only question would be on that um, catch basin, if that that's going to filter salt in that system the well, treatment I don't know. so i don't know if we can get something in writing but it doesn't have any clear information in here and it looks like it wouldn't could, could so it, could it be imposed that they do not use salt at that site well that i mean i don't know we live in maine i think that maybe we just ask for more information on it i'm just trying to protect every, lovers so, brook so, right so nobody else comes back with the same thing why mm -hmm. why do we have salt in the water now? right yep I would just be interested to see if it filtered it properly and then you could do whatever you wanted for you know I don't think there's a system that no an engineer would tell you is going to treat for salt I didn't think so either no. okay no. and the state highway is right there which I'm sure gets salted quite a lot what you do find is that people can voluntarily um, sign up to practice uh, salt management where you use the minimum amount of salt necessary to do the job I think a lot of companies that are in charge of parking lots landscape companies that have to do 50 commercial sites they're gonna whack a lot of salt on there so they're right. gonna have to come back well, uh, so they don't get sued you know that kind of stuff well that's kind of my question they're gonna have a parking lot with people <coughs> coming in they don't want it slippy they're gonna put yeah. some salt down right right and, and they kind of have to right because yeah. the public is coming in so you have to balance the nope, desire to protect the public from slip and fall with protecting the brook which is very yep. important too so I think that uh, if they would uh, agree that they would follow best management practices for limiting salt use um, that's about the best you can get Still and still meet safety requirements and okay. uh, not put the public in danger of slipping and falling when they come to your site. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. I don't have anything. No? Oh, I'm good. Tammy, you have anything? Nope, you guys have covered the concerns that I had. I made sure that their application was complete. John and I spoke today, and he's even volunteered to go to Maine DOT to ensure that his curb cut will be in compliance with having the added business coming and going from that facility. The light industrial that was in there before was not much traffic whatsoever. So they're looking at an, a site plan expansion. They're looking at a change of conditional use and they're getting all of the conditional uses that they had originally requested when this all started. So because it never made it to that point, I had them include all of it on this one so they can do one package with it and they don't have to come back and say, well, now we've got this building up. Can we get this conditional use? They're proposing the conditional use, the site plan expansion for the 6,000 square foot structure. That's going to be a separate conditional use based under what they have already obtained for a permit from the town for their cannabis so they're the last ones that once if this gets approved they're the last ones coming in all the permits will then be filled and in compliance mm -hmm. so we're looking for a motion to approve the expansion is that weird you're looking at a an, a motion to deem the application complete application complete yeah. The, the concerns you brought up, Jenny, are, were they addressed to your satisfaction? Yes. And this is only sketch. Okay. So as they've heard the concerns tonight, when they come back for preliminary, if you so deem because they are complete, the site walk that I really encourage you to do, mm -hmm. 
So you can see all of the areas in which were discussed tonight, along with the public hearing, if there are any changes that when they go back to the office, they'll take and be able to discuss and say, okay, this is how we're gonna change it. So when they provide us with their preliminary and or final on the same evening, which you could do. I just wanna make sure that tanks on the new plan going forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that That's was one important. of the recommendations. Yeah. Yep. Do so. we want to, and, and is it within our purview to say before the site walk, the, the tank issue and the drainage issues that those are addressed and installed prior to a site walk? Is that within our purview or not so much? They don't need no, to be. It, they don't need no, to be. It okay. just have to okay. be for the, the uh, final. Yeah. The final. Okay. And I know the applicant well enough to know that she's going to come right to the town and, and get that resolved. Okay. So, Excellent. Yeah. So we're and looking there might for a be some recommendations the complete. at the I, site. I will make that motion to find the application complete. I'll second that motion. Okay, for the discussion. <laughs> All in favor? Same two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. <laughs> We're trying to make it easy on you. <laughs> Shannon's loving it. She just has to copy and paste. Yeah. And do we need to do anything with the change of conditional use tonight? No, no. because okay. it's on the application, and okay. that's everything's okay. going to. You're going to finalize everything all at, all at once. once. Okay. What, so was what the you, address a happy accident, or or was that by design? Yeah. It was a happy accident. Wow, that's a, that's amazing. It's serendipitous. It really is. We had this discussion when you guys were first in here. Yeah, yeah. Across, yeah. Yeah. across my yeah. mind too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 You do need to set the sidewalk, and you do need to set the public hearing. Okay. Yeah. Um, so September. First meeting is September. So that's what, uh, September 1st. We don't have enough time to get it noticed because we only have a one publication mm-hmm. newspaper. Okay. So then... 15th? Like, the 15th. Yeah. I won't be there. I'm on so September 15th, site walk. Yeah. What time would five you o'clock? like? 5 o'clock. You want 5? It's going to start getting darker earlier. Yep. Yeah. Just yeah. We, yeah. yeah. So we're good. Don't rush it. Does okay. 5 o'clock work for you? Don't rush it. Didn't you okay. say that about well, pumpkin? Bambi season's coming, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Remember when I was like, oh, pumpkin. Okay. Like, oh, so you know. September 15th for the site walk at 5 p.m. Five yeah. And then the public hearing will also be on the 15th. At 6.30. At 6:30. During, the, during the course the of the regular meeting. meeting. Okay. Great. Great. Super. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. All right. Next is the second public comment. I don't think anyone's on Zoom, so no one's coming up. We'll close that. Uh, informational items. Jen. I want to go before Tammy. Okay. <laughs> so I have happy news. 12 Sullivan Street, across from Town Hall, the first building of the new um, developed downtown site, yep. we did issue two um, certificate of occupancies this week. Oh, nice. One for Primal Fit Main LLC, so the new gym. And the other one from oh for uh, Mint you. Dental Spa. Yes. Um, the butcher will be right behind them. They just have a few things to finish on their cold room, and then they will also receive CO. So by September 1st, hopefully, all three buildings will be actively open. So go check them out. Grab a sandwich, get your teeth cleaned, go to the gym. <laughs> In that order? In that order? It's weird. It makes a good order. Eat, clean, clean your teeth, go to the gym. Get fit. Yeah. yeah. Like well, anyway, so we're pretty excited as a town about that. We've been waiting a long time for this. It's finally coming, you know. It's mm. so great. So that's really what I wanted to say. Thanks. Thank okay, you. You got something? She you were going to say that? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's my news. That's ah, not her news. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have been watching it. You hear the beeping. You hear the hammering, the nailing, yeah. whatever they're doing outside the building. And watching that take shape like mm-hmm. that. Is like it's unbelievable mm-hmm. to see what it was mm-hmm. and where it's going, including when you go inside the structure. Mm-hmm. It's just it's amazing. It certainly is. It was Tuesday, it was amazing. Yep. Yep. Okay. If there are no uh, further items for consideration from the depths of the Berwick Town Hall in the esteemed Burgess Meeting Room, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. I second that motion. All in favor? All right. Thank you.